All right, let's be clear here. We've got this data from the analysts and HTC and Apple and Samsung and all that, and you're asked in the exam, do a customer preference map. And it's really interesting that in some ways, some of these characteristics are kind of at the enterprise level, not in terms of the actually handset level. And so there may be a little bit of a disconnect in how these companies are ranked at the enterprise level and to, versus the old handset, all right? But everything else being equal, we could still do a kind of a basic ranking, okay? If we assume that the customer preferences are factored in uh, that uh, table of information, okay? And so the question was, oh, so what do we mean by unit value and, sorry, uh, unit share and then value share? And what I said was indirectly you can get a rough proxy for what is driving the value of that organization. So for Apple, because its share of value is much higher than its share of market, then its margins or high price is actually driving its success. Are you with me on this? And then we can go to Nokia where its share of value is here, but its market is so high, so it's not its margins are not driving Nokia's success, but more that it's just making a hell of a lot of phones, okay? All right, it's just making a lot of them and making a little bit on each phone. And so you can get a sense from that that customers are buying from Nokia because of the price value for money. They're not necessarily buying from Apple because of that factor. And so it's possible on a relative basis to actually put Nokia higher up on that attribute, say compared to Apple or HTC. Okay? So that's what we're trying to get you in the feel of here. Okay, you we've kind of you're in strategy mode here, not financial analysis mode. But what's important is it's no good me teaching you, oh, here's this fancy graph I want you to do, and here's the data. And then you go out and you start working for BCG and McKinsey, and you think, oh, I've got this fancy graph I can do for a client. And say, well, that's not much use because we don't know where to get the data for that. You with me on that? Okay. So you can have all the fancy tools and techniques in the world. If you don't know where you can quickly get data, to use it, then it's not very useful, right? So what I what I want to show you in that question, rather than trying to confuse you with the ambiguity of some of these rate rankings, was just to say, well, look, here's real data that came from an analyst report, okay? And so possibly we could use that to build a basic preference map, okay? So just want to show you that the practical origin of that information you can put into some kind of graph. Okay? So that's what um, I'm very big at. Uh, any questions on that? Uh, really, and I appreciate questions asked already too. So how are we going? You all, you all got that sense of what a customer preference map is about? All right, the other thing you need to you be aware of is there's our customer preference map here. Our beautiful customer with the teeth. And we've got to decide on a cost leadership strategy, chipsets chip strategy. And we could get a sense from that customer preference map to say, well, it's either following a cost leadership or product differentiation. How do we know it's cost leadership? Because in a sense that customers are going to chipset because of price. They're not going to chipset because chipset has customized design or power and speed. They'll go to the competitors for that. When it comes to strategic analysis, a lot of it is all about, okay, how does this comp firm compare to its competitor? It's not, chipset may not have the best value for money in the world, but compared to its competitor it does. That's all that matters, all right? Okay, so if Apple product wasn't in the market, you would probably think that Samsung is the best on the planet. Okay, but now Apple's there, then, you know, you've got to think twice and Oh, what dimension are you asking me to rank on? Do you know what I mean? So when it comes to strategy, uh, it really depends on who is competing with that company. Okay, when it comes to doing that customer preference analysis, oh, what choices do the customers have? And so it's a relative thing. It's not an absolute. Okay, so to, 
Uh, we know Chip said has cost leadership. Now, there's all this thing that goes on here. Ladies and gentlemen, I could spend three hours, spend even more time, several days t teaching you all about that. That is, okay, now that Chip says a certain leadership strategy, it needs to build internal capabilities to achieve that strategy. In other words, execute, and also it probably needs, in some ways, uh, an effective way of managing those capabilities, okay? So it's sustainable, all right? So some of these things you'll pick up in terms of an organization management course or advanced management accounting course. But ultimately, we want to put in some board balance scorecard. And this is a point I, want, I made right at the beginning of this day. We got, you need to know all about this uh, strategy, preference map, and you need to know about here. You don't need to know about this part here, but I just want to show you how they are linked. Okay, I want to show you that there's some linking going on here. There's some storyline. If there's some linkage, there's some cause effect. And that's why we started off with the theme yesterday, the cause effect. So in terms of building internal capabilities, these are different things that chipset could do. It's just this is just some examples of what they could do and making sure that that they have the capabilities to actually drive cost down, cost down, cost down. Like in the electronics industry, it's 5% every quarter without fail. You know that, don't you? 5% cost down every quarter until I, I, short story. So I went to this um, chip manufacturer, they're making uh, generic components in Taiwan. And they just they got the contract for one of Apple's products, and uh, it was telling me about how Foxconn came to them, maybe for another one, and said, "Oh, we want cost down this quarter for this new product that we want." And he said, "No, you go to our competitors, because we make the best generic components of our kind in the world, and we don't cost down five percent." Now, that is a response from an organisation, from a company that has a cost leadership orientation or a differentiation orientation. Hands up for cost leadership, hands up for differentiation. Yeah, it's differentiation, okay? All right? It, say, it takes a bold owner. I was talking to executives last Sunday in Hong Kong and last Tuesday night in Hong Kong. We had over 100 come to each of my sessions. It takes a bold owner to say no to a cost down request from Foxcom. And that uh, same owner was uh, um, basically studied overseas in Canada, and did MBA, and so was very savvy and really believed their mi mission of this organization, of their company, is to make the best routine components in the world. And he was even saying that our components are better than the other routine components. And we're talking about we're talking about capacitors, resistors, inductors, which are very generic in that industry. It's sort of at they're the bottom. They're like the the crustaceans at the bottom of the ocean. You know, they feed on all the rubbish. You know, the the margins are supposed to be low. Those type of companies are not to be. They shouldn't be saying no to requests for top down. Uh, you know, cost down, cost down, cost down. But I came across this company and said, no, you go to our competitors because we make our products last longer and more effective than our competitors, so you choose. Interesting. I thought, wow, that's amazing. First I've ever seen that. And uh, like you look at all the analysis, you compare all the margins of all the different electronic component manufacturers. You know, the generic components are at the bottom of the pile in terms of margins. Okay. And the higher end ones, you know, the Qualcomm, the uh, NVIDIA and all that, they're higher up because they're doing their programmable chips and they're making higher margins there. So, you know, there's a whole pecking order of margins, okay? So the ones up here are doing product differentiation, the ones down here are more cost leadership. But then I found this one that said no, no, no to cost down. Interesting, so interesting when you go into the field to see uh, what real companies are doing and to see companies on the outside of the norm, which is what I saw. All right, so this company, you focus on value engineering, process engineering. In short, process engineering 
is about uh, just streamlining the processes, taking out all the non-value added activities. Value engineering is all about um, bring it, building value into that product at the cheapest cost possible, you know, or, or redesigning the product so you can make it for cheaper. Okay, so for example, um, you, there's an iPhone 5 there, right? Okay, and I've got the iPhone 4 here, and we're going to see whether they can fit into a jug of water. No, we're not going to do that, but I have done that in another class. All right, with this iPhone 4, you've got three parts to the, t the screen. You've got the glass, you've got the uh, electrode module that takes your capacitive touch, and then you've got the LCD behind it. The iPhone 5 is able to be thinner because now the electronic module that takes your touch is part of the glass. Okay, so there's only two parts to the LCM module there. There's three parts to this LCM module in this product. And so that is an example of um, uh, value engineering. Uh, so you're actually building value into the product, simplifying it, things like that, okay? All right, so we're building capabilities and then we can I implement strategy with the balanced scorecard. And so there's the scorecard there. I'm not here to take you through a scorecard. You look at the example. In the next few weeks, I'm going to show you how to build it. I'm just showing you now just for information that, oh, Chipset has a scorecard, all right? So, and we can look at the different parts of the scorecard. I don't want to waste your time going through that. I just want to remind you that, aha, there is a strategy map. And next week, we're going to show you how to do strategy maps. And a strategy map is basically a story because you know that this is what this is what shareholders want to know about. What is your top line? What is your growth? What is your outlook for the next three months, next six months? What is your product development cycle? How's that going? What's your product development roadmap? Shareholders want to know that. They don't care about whether employees are satisfied or not. They don't care about how many of your employees are trained. They don't care about whether workers are empowered or not. They don't care about, you know, manufacturing processes or real-time feedback. They don't ask that question. They ask about, you know, top line, margin improvement, productivity improvement, growth. They're asking questions about financials, which is here. And that's a challenge when you have a scorecard to convince C managers that, yes, I know you've got to, that's what you've got to report to, that's part of your responsibility centre, you know, return on investment, you've got to learn that, chapter 10, right? There's going to be a quiz on that, yeah, you know that, all right. So we understand that there's pressure on the C, C level managers to focus on here, here and here, but the challenge for you if you're implementing a scorecard how do you get their attention to say that all of this is relevant, important, or makes is meaningful? Like it's great in a course and good head knowledge, okay? Professor says you have to learn it, so you learn it, exam, oh, then you forget it. But I, I don't want to teach you stuff like that. If you don't need to use it, then I'll, I'll, I'll just take it out of the course, okay? I, I really, th there's a way in which you can use this, and that's why I'm going to show you in the, in the coming weeks, okay? All right? This is how you can use it. I'm going to come back to this, but here's the picture. Here's the big picture. You need to step back and realize that this is, these are the facts of the reality. CEOs, CFOs, and CIOs, you can get their attention with financial measures. That's what I just said. That's basically, in a nutshell, what I was just trying to emphasize. Let's hand up if you get part of that. Yes? Okay, we're getting it. Great, that's good, good, good. Now, I've just taken you through a time warp, you know, really, really quickly, right to the end, that, okay, the only thing that matters is financial, right? Because when we go into the shareholder meeting, that's all that matters. Like, if you do ratio analysis, this is all that matters, uh, growth, uh, growth ratios, price ratios, productivity ratios. By, by the way, price ratios are margin ratios. Okay. They're mar this is margin, all right? Just put margin in brackets here. 
All right, so if you're cost leadership, you're not worried about the growth, you're not worried about, you're not worried about the margin, okay? You more care about, are we growing, are we growing, are we growing? You more care about productivity, are we doing things more efficiently, more effectively? Is the factory making things faster, simpler, okay? Do we have less processes than before? Are we streamlining? Are we doing less moving? I went into a car manufacturer in South Korea in 1994 and I'm going through the production line. Daewoo, you know Daewoo? So we're in the production line and I'm thinking, okay, I know all about this. You, you minimize any move, right? Okay. Uh, this is all about uh, just in time and everything, how to optimize the factory. And so I'm going down the production line and suddenly there's a panel of a car on a trolley. It's taken off the end of the production line and the person is rolling that panel up to the start of the next part of the line to put onto the line for further processing. I'm thinking, why is that person moving it 50 meters from here all the way up to the other end of the line? Like, that doesn't make sense. Like, that moving is non-value added activity. You cut, that, you cut all that, that out when you're focusing on improving productivity. You cut all that out when you're focusing on uh, this thing here, this little thing called process engineering. Okay, process engineering is all about cut, 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 streamlining processes, cutting out all the moving times, the waiting times. Okay, anyway, what they said to me, they said, oh, there's a method in our madness. We want to take that part and we, we actually show it to the people in the production line and they can see whether they've done a good job or not. And so there's a different reason for why they were actually moving that part. And it was kind of like a quality feedback to the people on the production line. So until you go down the production line, you really don't understand fully about where you should make changes or not make changes because there's sometimes different reasons that you wouldn't guess if you've just felt, oh, I've read the textbook, we've got to minimise our wait time, we've got to minimise move times, we've got to minimise all this. So let's just do it. Okay, but there's always other reasons that need to be considered here. All right, I'm fast forwarding. I'm fast forwarding. We're in a shareholder meeting now. Shareholder meeting, questions are going to come up about that. Class, here's what I want you to be very clear of. Okay, remember, we took you cost leadership, um, customer preference map, and then right at the end, the CEOs, all they care about financial measures. What financial measures? Growth, price, and productivity are key ratios. Growth is all about, okay, of your profits for the year, how much came by having more growth in the market? Okay? Did you grow more than the market grew? Therefore, this is going to look very good. Okay? Productivity. Did you, did you uh, cut down costs more than the average costs in the industry? Uh, price is more the gross margin. So we know Apple's gross margins dipped down 30% for the first time in about four years. Now 29.5% gross margin now. Okay, so class, this is the first part of the balanced scorecard. This is the financial, this is the top, this is the end of the story, you with me? All right, okay, the beginning of the story is down here. The CEOs don't care about this. But you have to if you want to engineer change in the organization. The next three weeks, two and a half weeks, we're going to be focusing on how do we build up these next three. But today, I want you to go away and you're thinking, have an appreciation that, okay, they are always going to be there. These numbers are always going to be in demand because this is what the C managers are questioned on questioned on. This is what they are rewarded on. You know that, chapter 10, return on investment, return on assets, uh, profit center, okay? You know all about, you know that results controls, chapter 10. You're going to be examined on it in a quiz. So you know that the C managers really care about uh, financial measures. Now, so the question is, Neil, why do you have to learn the scorecard if this is all they care about? Well, Here's the reason why, you see. I just want to, I want to give you the most skeptical and the most cynical 
angle on the scorecard, you have to do that because you're going to come up against cynics and you need to know how to answer them otherwise your scorecard will fail okay so that's why I'm I've just I've taken you through a time warp taking you right down to the end and right at the end oh it's the financials that all that matter in this shareholder meeting you with me on that that's all they care about okay you with me on that say I got that okay good 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 all right so we're going to start re we're going to start to repair the damage we're going to fill in the gaps in the next few weeks okay all right so we start at strategy cost leadership differentiation right down the end financial okay um, in another course I do go into more detail how to calculate these that would take you many more hours of instruction you don't need to know that for the exam but appreciate that if there's one one strategy there may be a focus on these two metrics this strategy a focus on these two metrics so that means knowing the strategy does matter to the questions you're asking you with me because if you know that the company is cost leadership you're not going to care about questions about margin you see that if the company is product differentiation you may not care so much about productivity improvement okay so Knowing the strategy helps us get you asked the questions about financial. Now, where's the, where do we start repairing the damage to the balance scorecard? You know, you know, not much left now. Was, you know, because the financials is all that matter. All right, all right. No, the rest do matter because they are the customer internal and the learning and growth they are the story they are the story of the company's strategy the financials while most important to get attention of the CEO, CEO CFO CIO it is the non-financials that help guide where to allocate resources so this gets the attention oh we need to invest more money in production well then you go to the non-financials to help guide that investment okay but it's the financials that get the attention it's very hard to get the attention of a CEO to say oh our employees are dissatisfied do you think what what's the CEO going to say to that our employees are dissatisfied they're not very happy do you think a CEO cares about that not if it's a large multinational okay and they've got to just drive top line they've got to not if they've got to drive uh, pro margin and growth, okay, and new products roadmap all the time, which most of these smartphone companies are doing, all right? But here's where the balance scorecard comes into assistance. The balance scorecard helps here. It helps in giving feedback very quickly, see the blue line, in when you allocate resources, it helps give feedback on, okay, if a company like Apple, HCC, like even uh, TSMC in Taiwan, it just allocated $10 billion for new production investment in, for 2014. $10 billion? Wow. So somehow uh, some of these measures can help guide how that investment is done. Of course, most of the investment is going to go in machinery. All right? But some of that investment needs to go towards training of the people to run the machines. Are you with me? And so then you might need to select new people to run the machines. Are you with me? Ah, financial is not going to help you make those decisions. Now you need the assistance of uh, non financial measures, the internal learning growth. Okay? Are you with me here now? All right, you see the financials is driven. Okay, we've got to make this big investment. Now, the execution of that investment, are you with me here? We've got to look to internal measures and learning and growth measures to get the most out of these investments. Very few investments cannot be made without thinking about the human capital and about the culture and the people controls and all these other things that go around the machines you can buy a machine but who's going to switch it on switch it off who's going to put the tooling in it and take it out 
You with me on that? All right, so yes, these guys make the big capital investment decisions, but the scorecard can help in how the investment is made, operationalized, so the production is done seamlessly. You with me on that? Okay, so now we're starting to, you know, we come back from the brink, so, you know, we're over here thinking, oh, there's no life for the scorecard, it's dead. It's just financial. They don't ask questions about finance. They don't care about satisfied employees in the shareholder meeting. They don't care about the customer in the shareholder meeting. All they care about is what is your top line? What is your margin? Where's your product roadmap, right? You know, you're with me on that, right? All right, you're going to be a better consultant if you appreciate that that is a very important focus of C managers, okay? You know that's there, then you're going to be better in arguing for putting in new non-financial performance measures because you can see what they're focusing on, then you're going to do a better presentation because you know what is in their mind to start with. You with me on that? Are you with me here? You need to be able to sell a scorecard, you need to be able to sell it. You need to be creative. Okay, so we've got these decisions. Feedback, feedback, feedback. Now what about PCF? Okay, get your pen out and you can write down what does P mean. P stands for Pareto analysis. That is, it's like the 80-20 rule, working out a root cause analysis, then you work, which is uh, F. F is the fishbone diagram. Remember root cause analysis? Ladies and gentlemen, are you with me here? Root cause analysis, that's F, F is for the fish. Rui? CK? F is for fishbone diagram, okay? You, you know, yeah. You, you, okay. You is month, okay? Don't confuse me on that, all right? Okay. All right. So, fishbone diagram. And here we have C. C is control chart. It's another, it's another dimension of Six Sigma. Control chart, if we statistically graph all the defects, or the scrap, or the time of processes, we're going to have some variance over time. And with a control chart, you're just looking for the abnormalities. There's always some variance. It's the abnormal things you look out for. Okay, while I'm not going to examine you on that, I just want to you to appreciate that there are three key tools and techniques that you can use to help, help, uh, we're talking about uh, help target problems and correct problems in executing changes in the production environment, okay? The first one is the Pareto diagram. That is, we haven't got resources to fix everything, let's just focus on the 20% that's causing 80% of our problem. Or focus on the 20% that's causing 80% of this cost. Okay, you with me on that? You with me here? The 80-20 rule, you know that, don't you? I can see it in your smile. Yes, all right. And the C stands for control charts. Control charts, where you actually graph some process and you get variance over time and you pick, and long as it's in a, a tolerance, then it's okay. But it goes out of that tolerance, then you intervene and you've, what's going on here? Something's out of tolerance here. So I know I did, I did talk to a parts manufacturer in Melbourne many, many years ago where they were making parts for, I think, one large car manufacturer, Philip, large car manufacturer. Anyway, what happened was that, that they had the tolerances too tight that the machines, they were stamping parts or pressing the metal harder than what the customer needed. And so the consultant that I worked with suggested don't press it so hard and said, well, the harder the better, right? No, but you just only need to press as hard as what the customer wants. Just because the harder you press, guess what happened? The machine tooling wore, wears out faster. And then you're replacing the tooling more and they cost money. But back off and go back to the tolerance that the customer wanted and then the machine lasted longer and the customer's happy, you see? So when it comes to production and when it comes to saving money, 
you just work within the tolerances that customers are happy with. You, you don't. I know you guys strive for excellence, but if you try and make everything perfect, then you can get machine breakdown, you can get bottlenecks, you can get tooling wear out faster. Lots of things go wrong. So when it comes to production environment, it's not about making everything perfect. It's about making things consistent within tolerances as set that those tolerances are with, in line with what the customers want. And, and this you achieve through control charts, is it? Yeah, control charts help you keep in those tolerances, okay? Okay, now you don't need to know that for exam, but I just want to show you that, remember I took you from strategy down to financial and, and I'm, I'm trying to, we're going to, we're going to do a strategy map and balance scorecard to help bring those two things together. But there's stuff that is missing from this course that um, if you want to know more about that you go into detail and it's, it's much more associated with production operation management, production operations management, okay? So if you're interested in that, if you're interested in going and consulting, it's very useful information for you to study. And you could do an online course on that anyway. Okay, and I think it would be very valuable for you if you're going in consulting. All right, so PCF, all right. Uh, so non-financial measures help give feedback on training, uh, quick feedback on whether things are operating or not, because th they give faster feedback than financial measures. And then you've got these different processes there. And what I want to show here is this is what gets the attention of the CFO, all right. So keep that in mind. That is the dark world of the scorecard, this circle here. Basically, you can have the most beautiful scorecard in the world and the CEO will say, okay, uh, what's my top line growth for the last six months? And you're thinking, oh, don't you care about satisfaction of the employees or the productivity or the training? Look, I've got to answer to my shareholders, I don't care. That's the reality, that's the reality, okay? That's the reality, okay? So accept that and work within that and then you won't be disappointed and you'll be able to fight against misconceptions about these non-financial measures that you're trying to build in which can be relevant and can be made very useful okay but if you don't know that reality when you come up against that you're going to be a very sad consultant okay and disappointed and you won't have any creativity you won't have any energy and you're thinking, oh, they don't like my scorecard, you know, it's just, all right? So I just want, that's why I'm, I just want to show you the dark side, okay, the reality out there. Okay.